Hi guys. In this video, we'll take a look at instruction to geometric sequences, geometric sequences formulae, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So what exactly is a geometric sequence? We have seen arithmetic sequences, where we repeatedly add a common difference to the first term. So for example, we could have the arithmetic sequence 2, 5, 8, 11. We take our first term 2, and at each stage, we add a constant number, and in this case, it is plus 3. Now, instead of adding, we could multiply by a number repeatedly. So let's say we take 2 as our first term, and instead, this time, we have 6, and then we have 18, and then we have 54. All we have done here is to, instead of add, multiply by a constant number, and again, that constant number is 3. The sequence this generates is called a geometric sequence. For example, we could have the geometric sequences 3, and then 3 halves, 3 quarters, 3 eighths, and so on. This has a first term of 3, and at each stage, we are multiplying by constant number 1 half. Or we could have, say, minus 5, and then it jumps back to 10, and it jumps the opposite way to minus 20, and then back to 40, and so on. To have this jumping back and forward, we have to multiply by a negative number, and in this case, this is multiplying by minus 2. Suppose we'd like to find the tenth term of a given geometric sequence. We'll take the sequence again, 2, 6, 18, 54. And again, this has a first term of 2, and at each stage, we are multiplying by the same constant number, 3. We could calculate the value of each term up to the tenth term in order to find its value. So the first few terms, 2, 6, 18, 54. And again, this is the first, second, third, and fourth terms, respectively. And let's say we miss a few out and get up to 1, 4, 5, 8. And then we have 4, 3, 7, 4. 1, 3, 1, 2, 2, and then 39,366. These are the 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th terms, respectively. Now, this is a very slow process. We would prefer to be able to find the value of the 10th term directly. Instead of having to calculate every single one of the terms up to and including the 10th term. So what exactly are the geometric sequences formulae? There are important values that characterise geometric sequences. Let's say again we have the sequence 2, 6, 18, 54, and so on. Again, all we have done by the nature of a geometric sequence is to multiply by 3 at each stage. And these two values, the first term, 2, and the common ratio, 3, are the two important values that characterise this geometric sequence. We refer to these characteristic values using certain letters. For the first term, we write A. And for the common ratio, we write R. We can write a general sequence using sequences notation. Again, Let's say we have the same sequence 2, 6, 18, 54. The first term we can write as u1, the second term as u2, the third term as u3, and the fourth term as u4. We often refer to certain terms of the sequence by the subscript in this notation. So again, given the exact same sequence 2, 6, 18, 54, we have these values u1 up to u4, and we refer to u2, in this case 6, as the second term, and correspondingly say u4 
as the fourth term in the sequence. We refer to the general term of the sequence as the nth term. So in this case with the 2, 6, 18, 54 geometric sequence, we have our u1, u2, u3, and u4, and these correspond to the first, second, third, and fourth terms of the sequence correspondingly, but then we go all the way up to u sub n, and this is our nth term. In this case, this is the expression 2 thirds multiplied by 3 to the power of n. So in the case n equals 1, we have 2 thirds times 3 to the power of 1, and so the 3s cancel out and we get 2, and so on for the other corresponding values u2, u3, and u4. The general formula for the nth term can be found recursively. In general, we can write a geometric sequence as the first term a, and then we multiply, so we have a r, and then we multiply again, so we have a r squared, and so on. By looking at the corresponding terms, we have the first term, the second term, the third term, the nth term. And so by looking at the pattern, we can see that the nth term is going to be a r to the power of n minus 1. Again, this corresponds with the first, second, and third terms, and so on, because the third term, for example, is a r squared. So 2 is 3 minus 1, and therefore for the nth term we have a r to the power of n minus 1. Therefore, the formulae for u sub n, the nth term, is a r to the power of n minus 1. This allows us to find the terms of a geometric sequence directly. Again, let's look at this same geometric sequence 2, 6, 18, 54. And as earlier, we wanted to be able to find the 10th term. So let's examine u sub 10. This, using our formula, is going to be equal to the first term 2 multiplied by the common ratio, which is 3, to the power of 10 minus 1. And therefore, this is 2 multiplied by 3 to the power of 9. 3 to the power of 9 is equal to 19,683. So therefore, as we had before, we have 39,366 as our 10th term. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example says that given a geometric sequence with first term 4 and common ratio 1.1, we are asked to find the 20th term of the sequence to 3dp. Our first step is to recall the formula for the nth term. We have that the formula for u sub n is equal to a r to the power of n minus 1. Our second step is to substitute in the values in the question. We are looking for the 20th term. So this is u sub 20, and therefore we have u sub 20 is equal to the first term 4 multiplied by the common ratio 1.1 to the power of 20 minus 1. Our third step is to write down the answer. We have by simplifying that u sub 20 is equal to 4 multiplied by 1.1 to the power of 19. When we consider the 1.1 to the power of 19, we approximately get 6.1159. Now, we have chosen to write this number to 4dp, just in case multiplying by the 4 has an effect on the next decimal place. We've been asked to give our answer to three decimal places, and so we need to be careful about getting every single possible value in there that we can. So we've kept the 4dp because it's possible that if the fourth decimal place is big enough that multiplying by the 4 will affect the third decimal place. So when we do so, we get 24.464. Our second example tells us that given a geometric sequence with first term 6 and common ratio 5, determine whether 6,000 and 468,750 are part of the sequence, and if they are, find which term of the sequence that they are. Our first step is to recall the formula for the nth term. We have that the formula for u sub n is a 
r to the power of n minus 1. Our second step is to substitute in the values of a and r in the question. We have that in general u sub n is equal to 6, that is the first term, multiplied by 5 to the power of n minus 1. And upon simplification, we get that u sub n is equal to 6 fifths, and then we multiply by the 5 to the power of n. This has an analogue in arithmetic sequences. We tend to leave our arithmetic sequence in the form a plus bn, like 6n minus 4, rather than leaving it in the general nth term form a plus n minus 1d. All we have done is to bring the 5 to the power of minus 1 down to give us 6 fifths 5 to the power of n. Our third step is to consider the first value and attempt to solve for n. If it's the case that 6 fifths multiplied by 5 to the power of n is equal to 6,000, then we have that 5 to the power of n is going to be equal to 5,000. And therefore, by performing logs, we get that n is equal to the log base 5 of 5,000. This, using a calculator, is 5.3 to one decimal place. Now, it is important because it's not a whole number value, and therefore, with our fourth step, we're going to state the conclusion for the first value, and since 5.3 is not a natural number, we have that 6,000 is not a term of the geometric sequence. Our fifth step is to consider the second value and attempt to solve for n. So now we try and make 6 fifths multiplied by 5 to the power of n equal to the second value, which is given in the question as 468,750. So we try and make our nth term expression equal to that, and then try and solve for n to see if it's a whole number or not. Then we multiply up and get that 5 to the power of n is equal to 390,625. And then by performing logs, we have that n is equal to the log base 5 of 390,625, which is this time precisely equal to 8. Our sixth step is to state the conclusion for the second value. Because we have a whole number value for n, we have that the number 468,750 is actually a term. Our last step is to write down the corresponding value of n. The value of n to which 468,750 corresponds to is n is equal to 8. Our last example tells us that given that the third term of a geometric sequence is minus 63 and the sixth term is 1701, we are asked to find the first term and the common ratio. The first step is to recall the formula for the nth term. We have that u sub n is equal to a multiplied by r to the power of n minus 1. Our second step is to form an equation using the third term. We have that u sub 3 i.e. the third term, is equal to minus 63. And therefore we can form an equation which is in particular that a multiplied by r to the power of 3 minus 1 is equal to minus 63. And therefore a r squared is equal to minus 63. The third step is to form an equation using the sixth term. We have that the 6th term is 1,701, and therefore u sub 6, the 6th term, is equal to 1,701. This gives us that a r to the power of 6 minus 1 is equal to 1,701, and therefore our second equation is that a r to the power of 5 is equal to 1,701. Our fourth step is to solve these simultaneous equations. I'll write the second one first because we'll be doing some dividing. So a r to the power of 5 is equal to 1701. And similarly, a r squared is equal to, let's have a look, minus 63. If we divide, this gets rid of the a 
and we end up with precisely r cubed. 1701 divided by minus 63 is minus 27. And therefore we can deduce that the value of r is minus 3. And then by using our second equation, we have that a multiplied by the value of r all squared, so minus 3 all squared, is equal to minus 63. Therefore 9, i.e. the value of minus 3 all squared, multiplied by a, so 9a, equals minus 63, and this gives us the value of a is minus 7. Our last step is to write down the answer. We have the values of r and a, r equals minus 3, and a equals minus 7. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snappify smiley face, and together, let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.